Uh, my student, good afternoon. Welcome to Mr. KW channel of chemistry. And uh, this afternoon, we are going to discuss about uh, preparation of oxygen gas in the laboratory. So welcome, my student. Uh, today, my student, you can focus on the board here. Uh, the title is uh, Preparation of Oxygen in the Laboratory. And uh, my student, when we prepare any gas in the laboratory, we have to remember uh, the reagents we are going to use. So in this lesson, my student, the chemical reagents we are going to use, number one is manganese for oxide, and this is the chemical formula of manganese for oxide. Then uh, the second reagent is hydrogen peroxide liquid, and this is the formula of hydrogen peroxide liquid. This is the chemical formula of hydrogen peroxide liquid. Then, uh, of course, we have to know the, reagent, the, the, the reaction that is taking place. That's the chemical equation. And in this case, we have hydrogen peroxide liquid uh, in the presence of manganese 4 oxide, which is acting as a catalyst. And uh, when this manganese 4 oxide solid uh, will speed up the decomposition of this hydrogen peroxide liquid to oxygen gas and water oxygen gas and water and uh, also we need to know how to arrange the apparatus during preparation of oxygen gas and uh, this is the arrangement of apparatus um, so this is the conical flask, then we have the pistol funnel, we have the delivery tube, then we have the petri dish, then we have the beehive shelf, the beehive shelf, then of course we have the gas jar, this is the gas jar, and the role of beehive shelf is to support the gas jar, then uh, when oxygen gas is formed in this conical flask, the oxygen gas will escape through this delivery tube like this. Then it is collected over water. You can see cold water in the battery dish. So oxygen gas is collected over water. So you can see the gas bubbles in water. These are the gas bubbles. These are the gas bubbles in water. Then oxygen gas will be collected here. Is it okay, my student? So with me here, uh, I have operators and uh, those reagents, but my student, uh, hope you are focusing on me. Uh, focus on me, please, my student. So at the end of this lesson, we must be able to name the reagents used to prepare oxygen. We must be able to write a chemical equation to prepare oxygen, and also, we must, uh, we must also uh, state the identity. How do we identify oxygen gas? Then you must be able to state the method uh, by which oxygen is collected. Then uh, finally, we'll be able to state at least three uses of oxygen gas. So my student, welcome, uh, welcome as I take you through. So this is the battery dish. This is the petri dish I'm talking about. Then this is the conical flask. This is the conical flask I'm talking about. Then uh, this is uh, now the delivery tube. This is the delivery tube. This is what we call cork. Cork delivery tube. Then this is what we call distal funnel. This is the distal funnel. Is it okay? Then this is what we call the gas jar. This is the gas jar. Then we have been talking of beehive shelf. This is it. So procedure number one, I'm going to arrange the apparatus. But before that, I have to show you the reagents. I talked of the reagents. So this is manganese 4 oxide. It's a black solid. Manganese 4 oxide is a black solid. It's one of the reagent. That is a catalyst. That is a catalyst. Then also, 
This is a liquid we refer to as hydrogen peroxide. Please check and see on the container. Is it okay? This hydrogen peroxide is a colorless liquid. So uh, procedure number one, I'm going to uh, pour or transfer this solid. That is, uh, this solid is what? Manganese 4 oxide solid. It's a black solid. So I transfer the whole of it into this conical flask like this. Into this conical flask like this. Then after that, uh, I'm going now to fix the delivery tube plus uh, the distal funnel on a cork like this. So I'm going to fix like this and ensure that no air or no gas will escape from inside. Is it okay? Then I have to put it uh, on the battery dish. I'm going to put it on a battery dish like this. Then thereafter, I take uh, this beehive shelf to support the gas jar like that. Then thereafter, I have to fill this petri dish with water, cold water. Is it okay? So this is now water. to add more water like that then after that my students I now place the gas jar on top of the beehive shelf like this uh, that way is it okay? Then the next procedure, I now take hydrogen peroxide liquid, now take hydrogen peroxide liquid, like this, just watch and see, it's a colorless liquid, look at the color, hydrogen peroxide liquid is a colorless uh, liquid, then I'm now going to introduce this uh, liquid into the conical flask where we have hydrogen, where we have uh, manganese oxide solid, a black solid, like that. Um, so I'm going to add hydrogen peroxide through a pistol funnel through this pistol funnel then you will be making observations as I add because you will be able to see the gas bubbles uh, inside the battery dish is it okay? that will be oxygen gas let us go little at a time little at a time you can see the reaction also in the conical flask. Then uh, your observation will be on the... You can move closer, my student, and ensure you are taking from, from here. My student, you can move closer and see the gas bubbles. And see the gas bubbles inside the battery dish. Are you seeing now the gas bubbles? Those are the gas bubbles. Are you seeing the gas bubbles on the battery dish? Those gas bubbles are due to production of oxygen gas. Uh, my student, Emmanuel, are you seeing? Yes. I can be able to see the gas bubbles. See the gas bubbles, cut the gas bubbles. When I add little at a time, you can be able to observe the gas bubbles. You're able to 
absorb the gas bubbles those are gas bubbles Absorb the gas bubbles. Good. Able to absorb the gas bubbles. Those are the gas bubbles. This is uh, the simplest way my student of preparing oxygen gas. Very simple. What you need to do is just patience and we have always said patience pays. You can see gas bubbles. So when a reaction takes place in this uh, conical flask, oxygen is produced, then it is kept through the delivery tube, all the way it is collected over water into this gas jar. Then at the end of this experiment, my student, we are also going to see how to identify uh, oxygen gas. what we call chemical identification of oxygen gas. And see the gas bubbles. And uh, my student, the reason why we collect oxygen over water is because oxygen is slightly soluble in water, or we can as well say oxygen is insoluble in water but the solubility is very slight so slightly soluble in water uh, uh, my student Emmanuel please come around and uh, help me to do this just come just come come this way um, just come this way just help me to get hold of this slightly like that it is okay thank you My student, you can see, you can see as uh, Emmanuel is holding this, you can see the bubbles, very many gas bubbles. Is it okay? So my student, I, I think now we have enough oxygen gas uh, being collected in this gas jar. So the next uh, procedure, my student, we are now going to test for identity of oxygen gas. While Emmanuel is holding like that, my student, just watch. Uh, Emmanuel continue holding like that. Um, so my student, whenever we test for the presence of oxygen gas, we normally use what we call 
a glowing splint. So I'm going to ignite this wooden splint so that I put off the flame. Then I use that glowing splint now to test for the presence of oxygen. Let us go. Uh, Manuel, you continue holding. So my student, you can watch now. Just watch here what we are doing. Um, so I have to ignite the the wooden splint. Then I put off the flame. Is it okay? Then we test. Now this is the glowing splint. Now get watch my student. He gets relighted. Gets relighted. Are you seeing that? Oxygen relights a glowing split. Is it okay, my student? Now, thank you, Emmanuel. You can go back. Thank you very much. That is very good, Emmanuel. Uh, so, my student, you can now focus on the board for one minute before I finish. Um, so, uh, whenever we prepare oxygen, my student, uh, hydrogen peroxide in the presence of manganese oxide, which is a catalyst, it just uh, speed up the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide liquid to oxygen gas plus water. And this oxygen is collected over water. Is it okay? Then uh, in the conical flask, we have the manganese oxide solid, the black solid, it is here you have seen. This is the formula of manganese oxide. Then hydrogen peroxide liquid or liquid hydrogen peroxide is introduced through the distal funnel little at a time. Is it okay, my student? And therefore, can be able to see the gas bubbles of oxygen, the oxygen gas is collected here. So look here, my student, before I finish. Uh, now, how do we identify oxygen? So we have confirmed that we identify oxygen by using what we call um, uh, so my student for us to identify oxygen we use a glowing splint and you have seen when you introduce a glowing splint into a gas jar containing uh, oxygen gas it relights a glowing splint. Is it okay, my student? Uh, let me uh, take this pen. Let me take this pen. Um, uh, so, it uh, very good. It uh, relights oxygen, relights a glowing splint. Oxygen relights a glowing Splint oxygen relates a glowing splint. You have seen that. Then, methods of uh, collecting oxygen, methods of collecting oxygen, the method is called over water method. The method is called over water method, which property enables oxygen gas to be collected over water method because oxygen is slightly soluble in water so my student the assignment i'm giving you is for you to look at uh, various uses of oxygen but i'll give you one use oxygen is used in hospitals for patients with uh, breathing difficulties is it okay my student you can you look for other uses so thank you for watching you can subscribe into mr kw channel of chemistry. Thank you.